All right, well, we'll go ahead and, and begin our session for the day. Michael, if you would unmute yourself, or I don't know if you're able to do that. Otherwise, Jeff, why don't you unmute yourself today and we'll go ahead with the devotion. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, this morning, we will read uh, Colossians 2, verses 16 and 17. This is actually looking ahead to next Sunday. These are two of the verses from our upcoming epistle reading uh, for next Sunday. And so we read, Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink, or with regard to a festival, or a new moon, or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. And so we read, As holy and inviolable as the Sabbath day must have been to the people of God in the time of the Old Testament, it was not established by God for all ages. According to God's will, the entire Old Testament with its church and civil laws and institutions was not designed to remain forever, but was to serve only as a preparation and equipping for the coming of the Savior of the world. The Sabbath was a model of the rest of Christ in his grave at the end of his work of redemption, as well as a model of the perpetual Sabbath Christ wants to bring about in the hearts of his believers until he brings them to the eternal Sabbath in heaven. Therefore, with the coming of Christ, the entire scaffolding of the Old Testament was dismantled. By his coming in the flesh, Christ took away from us the oppressive yoke of countless outward rules. The time of the preparation ended, and with Christ, freedom from all servile service was granted to us. No appointed place, house, ceremony, or time of the Old Testament binds us. All shadows of Christ are put away because Christ himself has come. All models of Christ are abolished because Christ has appeared. The Old Testament itself revealed that all its shadow work would not last forever. Moses announced that after him, the prophet of God would be raised up, whom Israel shall obey. Jeremiah prophesied that when all the Gentiles would gather in Jerusalem for the sake of the name of the Lord, there would no longer be the Ark of the Covenant and sacrifice. Isaiah foretold in the, that in the New Testament, there would no longer be an appointed Sabbath, but from Sabbath to Sabbath. The children of the New Testament would thus keep Sabbaths every day. We find this abundantly confirmed throughout the New Testament. As soon as Christ entered his teaching office, he began to alleviate the strictness of the Mosaic law. He not only healed the sick on the Sabbath, he also allowed his disciples to pluck grain on the Sabbath, showing that the end of the Mosaic law, the Mosaic Sabbath, had come. Following the death of Christ, the curtain in the temple before the Holy of Holies was torn in two as a sign of the complete abolition of the Levitical worship. The holy apostles clearly taught that no Christian is any longer bound to the Jewish Sabbath. As St. Paul says in our text, therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Thus freedom from the Jewish Sabbath was clearly proclaimed to all Christians and the observance of an appointed day for duty as a command of God was not laid on their conscience. When false apostles convinced the Galatians to keep appointed days because God had commanded it, Paul informed them that they observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I may have labored over you in vain, Paul wrote. 
We see here that Christianity does not provide new laws and appointed times, places, and other outward things. Rather, all Christians have achieved a perfect freedom through Christ, and their only commandment is to love. In the epistle to the Romans, Paul says that a person should not offend or judge those who are weak in faith, but endure and bear. Thus, they still observed days, but he also said, the one who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and gives thanks to God. Therefore, Sunday is not a commandment of God, but a free arrangement of the Christian church for the remembrance of the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus Christ and the, holy, the institution of the holy preaching office. It is appointed for the holy assembling of Christians. Indeed, while Sunday is mentioned in the holy scripture, it is nowhere commanded. It is a part of Christian freedom. And so we pray. O God, our Lord, thy holy word was long a hidden treasure, till to its place it was by grace restored in fullest measure. For this today our thanks we say and gladly glorify thee. Thy mercy show and grace bestow on all who still deny thee. Amen. And at this time, let us continue with the prayers. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray together. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. All right, and thank you all for joining us for our devotion today. Thank you, Pastor. Thanks, Pastor.